Hello, my darlings, this is Maria, and welcome to my YouTube channel. If you're new here, please subscribe down below so we can be friends. Today, I wanted to talk to you about manifesting multiple things at once. This is something that enough of us do, right? We're never just focused on manifesting one thing and bringing forth a, a particular one single outcome in one area of our lives. We are raw, real, and human, and as such, we are hard to contain. And because we're hard to contain, we go after many things and we don't even realize how messy this is from the energy perspective as we're trying to manifest. And as all of the light forces, all of the goodness, all of the power of the universe is trying to help us to manifest the life that we want, we are the single biggest culprit around changing the direction. That's it. That's kind of like the agenda for today. Um, I wanted to let you know how to become part of the solution instead of part of the problem. And then today, this is a little bit uh, of manifestation, like advanced manifestation um, episode. Um, if you've been following me, you know that I am big on manifestation. I have wrote a book about manifestation. It's called 72 Keys to Manifestation, An Ancient Path of a Modern Day Alchemist that has 72 practices, that has 72 keys around helping you manifest the life that you want. Now that book is available on Amazon and um, that book is channeled. And I think of it as like the just table stakes for manifestation. That book is the entry point into the world of manifestation. Um, where we go from there is actually working hand in hand with the system's architect. I'm a big proponent of the fact that we live in a matrix-based world. We live in a virtual reality. It is a very well done system. It is a very persistent illusion. And by calling it a virtual reality system, by calling it the matrix, I'm in no way, shape or form trying to diminish its significance or somehow make you believe that this is so artificial that we should not care about the matrix. In fact, I think that the matrix is one of the best tools we could have ever possibly wished that enables soul evolution. Now, that being said, this is a game that is played according to a certain set of rules. The rules were originally created by the Master Systems Architect. The Master Systems Architect is a title um, in the same way that you guys have presidents and, you know, senators, and it's a political title, if you will, right? Because it has political power within the great hierarchy of light. The great systems architect works hand in hand with our creator, source consciousness, and they work together and collaborate on multiple virtual realities. We exist currently, we incarnate inside of one of those potentials, one of those realities. Now, the great architect doesn't work alone, but the the Bible of the Matrix, so to say, like the rule book of the Matrix was written by him originally. Where I'm going with this is very simple. I have been diving deep recently with a great systems architect to try to understand what are the ways that we go wrong as humanity uh, in terms of manifestation. And some of the things that I've been shown have been pretty fascinating. So today, just sharing one of them, you know, take it or leave it. This is out there per usual. Anytime you start working with a systems architect, you go like three layers deeper. And it is a, because the systems architect has to factor in the totality of everything and, you know, the different souls that are going to come to incarnate from beginner souls to very advanced souls. He has to, and it's a he, currently the soul that is a systems architect is masculine. And we can talk about that later. I'll save that little a tidbit for a later episode. Because he is a very big picture thinker, but also has to dive into the details. How the systems architect perceives the matrix is not how you and I are going to perceive the matrix because we are the users of the system, right? In the same way that, you know, if I have a laptop and I can send emails on that laptop or use Photoshop or whatever other software that I can use on the, uh, on my computer, you know, I may be the user of the system, but I am not the person that understands the motherboard and everything else that went into creating my computer. Like I may not understand the hardware. And so sometimes it's very fascinating uh, for me when I, um, channel from and when I get in touch with a systems architect to understand how he came up with this very complex system and also learn 
based on how the system is actually structured on how I should optimize my life. So here's the nitty gritty, and maybe I'll, I'll just start taking it home because I feel like it's been too lofty. Very often when we work on manifesting multiple things, we actually, instead of creating order, we are creating chaos in our own lives. I have yet to meet a person that, you know, if, if they are practicing manifestation, they only want one thing and, you know, in that for 10 years or however long it takes, right? They're just going to be focusing on that one thing. We're, we're not wired that way. As human beings, we're a lot more fluid. We're a lot more volatile. And so very often we're like, okay, well, I want that for my work life. Um, you know, that's my career goal or like, that's my, uh, you know, money goal. And then over here, I have my relationships goals and over here, I have my spirituality goals and over here, I have my health goals and over here, I have my family goals and all of the above. Like we are an ecosystem is what I'm saying. And that is beautiful. You guys, the problem is this very often, the things that we manifest are quite audacious or big, not always, not a, you know, but as a general rule, if we're trying to get somewhere Arguably speaking, it's something that is exciting enough and that is far away enough from where we are today that we need to work hard, quote unquote, to get there. But here is the deal. And that was like one of the biggest revelations from my recent conversations with the systems architect. Say you've set a big target on that map and you're saying, this is the North Star for my career. And then what, so what happens when you do that? Unbeknownst to you, your reality is always going to start rearranging itself based on that goal automatically, automatically, right? So the moment you make an intention, you set an intention, you make that clear, whatever that intention is for your career. For instance, I want to build a company. I don't know, like, let's say you want a restaurant chain, right? Of a certain caliber. And you're like, I want to build that restaurant chain. And that's my North Star. The universe has already started rearranging the building blocks to get you there. Automatically, it happens automatically. Now, the reason most people never achieve things, by the way, and there are multiple reasons why a lot of people have a hard, hard, hard time manifesting. But one of the reasons is that you start sending conflicting messages to the universe. You are not consistent. And the reason that you're not consistent is because you want these other things. You want your restaurant empire and you want a good partner, and you want to be healthy, and you want this, that, and the other thing, right? And that is where the universe starts getting confused because the universe is built to respond to your every whim and desire. Where this becomes a problem is when these desires are conflicting. For instance, let's say that I want to be this restaurateur, empire builder of a, like, you know, businesswoman over here. And that's my goal. It's a fake goal, by, by the way, just like giving you this as an example. And over here, I want to be a mother with five beautiful kids. And that is my intention. And another thing that I'm manifesting is being a really perfect mom and spending a lot of time with my family and, you know, having, a, I don't know, bake sales and, and, and just driving my kids around and like being really involved and engaged. And so the universe is getting two massive inputs, one over here around, hey, you're a business lady. And then one over here, hey, I'm, I'm like a housewife type of situation. And I'm like great mother, maybe not a housewife, but I'm a, I'm a mother, right? And the universe is like, okay, well, how do I give them both to this one human? And in this particular instance, those two goals are conflicting. But by the way, they don't have to be quite that conflicting, right? Because arguably, if you want to be an entrepreneur and, and really, really succeed, then your work is going to take up a lot of your daily life and a lot of your resource. If over here, your, your family is your priority, then that's going to take up a lot of your resource. And that is how we just created this conjunction that is not in your best interest. And we have more than one. And say, let's keep going with this example, right? Say I'm still here manifesting my restaurant thing and then manifesting being a mother. And then I, I'm scrolling on Instagram and I'm seeing this fancy destination somewhere in the Maldives. And I'm like, oh my God, wouldn't it be nice to go on vacation and, you know, stay at this five-star resort and I want to manifest that for myself. And just like that, a third thing appeared on the map of my wants, wishes, and desires. And the universe at this point wants to rip, rip, rip its proverbial hairs out. And it's like, so which one is it, girl? 
business, family, or lavish vacations? Which one do you want? And because I am sending, in this particular example, I would be sending such conflicting wants and needs to the universe. The universe has to do the deciding, actually, of what is most important to me. And so let me take a step back from this example and show you or try to explain to you what it looks like from the energy perspective. And this is something, this is a picture that the architect showed me. So your life could be reduced to energy, right? We all know everything is energy, but what does this actually mean? This means that there's actually a track of your life somewhere on an energetical plane. Imagine that if we could reduce the spatial world around you to like a 2D, uh, to like a 2D or 3D model, like 3D models actually probably good. So like we collapsed it onto a surface, right? And imagine that we're staring at your life from upstairs as if we we're like this big, I don't know, consciousness, right? Right in front of us is your life track. So imagine we're doing that. And so what, what I would see, right, if I were to zoom out into higher consciousness level, how our higher self sees, sees you, me, everybody who's incarnated, right? It's like a track and you're moving along a track. A track is a life, right? That's why they call it a lifeline because it's usually like a line. And then there's you kind of like walking your walk. Really, you don't see the walking because you really zoomed out, but you essentially see your placement on that grand map. But that's not all. Um, you are standing at a particular place of that track. Usually it's somewhere in the middle of the track, right? Because, you know, arguably you're not a baby. If you're a baby at the very beginning of the track, if you're, you know, retired, you'd be towards the end of the track. But let's say you're somewhere in the middle of the track, neither, neither here nor there quite yet. Here's what happens. Inside, it's so like your body, and that's what I will, like, if, if you guys can try to activate your, like, imagination right now, you're going to be able to see this so clearly, I like kid you not, this is kind of beautiful. Like imagine you're like the sphere, right? On the map, like sphere of light. What you're gonna see is a bunch of little strings. They look like strings of light or threads of light coming out you know, into the past and a bunch of threads of light going into the future. And they all culminate kind of like inside of you as if like your solar plexus, as if your core, as if your center, as if your belly was this culmination or like attraction point, like a big magnet. So you have essentially a bunch of threads of light coursing through your body and they're connecting you from past to the future. And what that means is very simple. There are decisions that you made way back when in the past around stuff like life partners, career choices, majors in college, best friends, you know, your arch nemesis, what all of that about your interests, hobbies, like there are, you know, there's been, you've made a ton of decisions, like millions of decisions, right? Big and small and everything in between in your past. What ended up happening is all of these decision, decisions that you have in the past, made in the past are anchors and they're anchoring you to, well, A, that time uh, where you made that decision, but also they're setting you up on a certain trajectory. And so every single decision that you've ever made is going to essentially be coursing through your body, body right now and leading you to outcomes. So decisions that you make in the past lead you to decisions, sorry, to outcomes in the future, right? Because there are all of these, like essentially you exist as a culmination of all these threads, if that makes sense. Here is the issue, right? Not only does your past determine your future, right? And if only it was so simple and people weren't trying to manifest things and people weren't trying to build a better life for themselves, right? It would be actually very, very predictable. What we would see is all of those decisions, right? Whether that's millions or whatever, they're leading to a particular outcome. And you as, you know, a figure on a board, you just move accordingly. However, once you get into a creator zone, once you start manifesting the life that you want, you mess up with this beautiful state of predictability, right? Because you're like, wait a second. I know that based on my past decisions, maybe I should be a doctor in a, or like a dentist uh, working in a dental office until I retire. And maybe that is the projection that I'm on. But in my example, I decide that I want to build a restaurant and hopefully more than one, like a series of, like a, um, a chain of restaurants. All of a sudden, the universe is like, okay, well... A, her karma is still here, right? So all of my decisions from the past is still here. So I'm still where I am, but yet I have created this goal for myself somewhere in the distant future. And if I charge this goal with enough momentum, meaning I think about it all the time, 
I envision it, I visualize to all these things, right? Then that thing, my dream, let's call it, starts getting a weight around it. And it starts attracting me towards it. And, you know, essentially we both are attracting each other, right? Like we are aligning. The process of alignment is a mutual attraction. So that being said, it would all be easy if only I didn't set up all of these other goals in front of me. And neither of them, by the way, are straight ahead of me. So there are all of these goals. And so the universe is scratching its head. And it's like, okay, well, the only way I can get this person everything that she wants is by delaying manifestation because, and there's a, there's a multiple, there is multiple reasons why, but when you are giving the universe conflicting inputs, and by the way, a lot of inputs, the universe has to do its own juggling act is essentially what it is, right? Because if you just gave it one thing to hit for you, it could put all of its resources, you could put all of your resources towards achieving that one goal and that one outcome, and you would be there in no time. But that is not how life works, right? Life is so much more complex, and we're very complex beings, so we'll want multiple things, very often conflicting things. So here's the problem with manifestation that nobody talks about, really. Like, nobody talks about it. Do you know how the universe works? The latest thing that you manifested becomes the most important thing. So... In Like in this particular example, I could have been browsing, right? Like imagine I'm the woman with a restaurant, no restaurant that wants a restaurant, right? From my example. Imagine I was browsing Instagram and saw an engagement ring. And I'm like, oh my God, I need this engagement ring. All of a sudden I start manifesting an engagement ring. So the, because this is the newest thing on my wish list, the universe is going to rearrange all of it, all of the chips on the table, according to my latest manifestation desire. So it's going to be like, yes, I remember you want to be the the mother of five kids. Yes, I remember you want a vacation on the Maldives. Yes, I remember that you want to be this great restaurateur uh, and, you know, all of that, like the businesswoman. But today you told me you want that engagement ring. And so I'm going to not necessarily scratch it all off, but I'm going to be zero focus on that engagement ring. All of a sudden it will build your, the entirety of your building blocks. And you're like three years later, sitting in your fluffy armchair, not having the restaurant, not having five kids, and not being on the Maldives, but maybe having that engagement ring. And you're like wondering, so where did it all go wrong? Where it all went wrong is that the universe is always going to help you manifest the latest thing. Like in other words, the universe doesn't measure the degree to what you want something. It doesn't always factor in the intensity of the desire. It actually operates on a principle of recency, right? Like what is the most recent thing? It's kind of like the urgency. You know, everything that's urgent is always perceived as more important. Uh, I don't know if you guys know this this, this framework um, in, in time management, but our brains are wired to perceive things that are urgent as important. And that is how somebody just texted you. You got distracted and you're like, oh, if, or like this is urgent, right? Because I just got a notification. This may be perceived as more urgent than studying for your exams, which is important. So because, because the universe is a very malleable system, one of the ways that the architect built it was that the recency factor really matters. So what you wished for today it is to some degree going to override what you wished for yesterday, a week before, three months ago, and three years ago. That is why with manifestation, it is important to do a refresher. Like always remind the universe where you stand in terms of priority. And I've never spoken about this, but it, you know, having seen what I've seen in terms of how the universe rearranges your world, um, based upon my latest conversation with the architect, I want to enforce this as, as like, a pretty big deal in manifestation because the most important thing that you can do that's going to serve your manifestation, that's going to catapult you into getting the life that you want is prioritization. Honestly, like you're going to have to set your priorities. Um, when the architect and I worked on my goals and God knows I have a lot, he was extremely adamant around me selecting the three things that I want the most and prioritizing them in the order that I want them. Like, Pick your number one, pick your number two, pick your number three. Solidify it. Have an agreement with the universe that no matter what else you may be wanting after scrolling your Instagram feed tomorrow, these are still your three. 
If that is kids, that's kids. If that is your restaurant game, that's your restaurant game. If that's your Maldives, that's your Maldives. But you need to understand your, your own priorities because otherwise the next thing that you want is going to be automatically located in the number one spot. And what happens to your old goals? What happens to your audacious dreams that take, by the way, always take longer to manifest? They go to the back burner. And part of the reason why is everything is connected to everything. We live in the ecosystem. So I was literally watching this track of, of golden threads and dropping like new wishes in it and saw it rearrange itself. And I understood that every new desire, every new wish that I have, any, every new intention once dropped into the collective soup of my life was impacting everything else. And because I have created this new intention, it may move me back 10 years, I don't know, five years, 10 years from the bigger things that I want to accomplish. And I would not even be aware of that, right? And so we as humans just keep throwing things on that playing board, thinking that we're still good and we're still golden and our manifestation is working. But also remember, we are a limited resource, right? Everything in this third dimensional world is finite. Our higher selves may be infinite. God Almighty may be infinite. But we as human beings are very finite. And that is why we have been put in the universe, in a world, in a setting where we are reminded just how finite we are 24 hours in a day, 365 days in a year. Like everything is just so finite. Your childhood is finite. Your adulthood is finite. You know, everything is finite. Everything kind of has like, and that's why they tell you everything that has a beginning has an end, right? We are in a very, in a world of limited resources. So the more things you try to manifest, you split your resources uh, your personal resource into just more um, more chunks, right? And neither one of them can be as impactful and as effective. So again, please remember that everything impacts everything. If you truly are serious about manifestation, always have a board of priorities. This is the number one thing for me. This is the number two thing for me. This is the number three thing for me. Because that is the guidance that universe greatly desires. Otherwise, the universe is going to make assessments itself based on what it feels. And very often, like I said, it's going to be based on the most recent thing that you have requested, not the most important thing for you. So always make sure there is a priority scale. By the way, I mean, and this is like a hardcore practice, but in a meditative state, you could see your lifeline just the same way that I've been describing. You can get into a meditative state and just have an intention to connect with your own personal lifeline. And, um, you know, and you would be able to imagine yourself as this golden globule of light with all these threads coming out of you, you know, leading you into the future, leading you into the past. And then you would see very large globules of energy. Usually they're golden or white in color um, that, that are in front of you in the future, things that you're trying to manifest. And you can, you can actually reorder them and reorganize them based on your own priority. You can be like, okay, well, this large globule that represents this desire of mine, I can move really straight in front of me so I know I hit it. And you would notice that by the virtue of you moving one thing, everything else in that system, all of these threads automatically rearrange themselves because this is an ecosystem where everything is controlled, right? Please understand that you don't live in a vacuum. Everything that you do impacts everybody else. Everything that everybody else does impacts you. It goes both ways, right? And that is why with manifestation, we have to be really clear. Really quick tips. Make sure that ideally you don't manifest more than three big, big things at a time because that is taxing on your resource. Make sure you always have a very, very clear priority, right? And, you know, make sure you do like a quick tally or a spring cleaning of your intentions. If there are things on that map that shouldn't be there, please cut them out ruthlessly because some of the things that you wanted when you were 15 or six are still there and the universe may bring them to you. You may be bringing them to you, you know, like, because this is a delayed gratification type of world. And so, yeah, just wanted to um, leave you with this. I hope this was insightful for you. If you have any questions, please let me know down below. But um, I also highly, highly encourage you to meditate um, and, and meet the great systems architect. He is a very fascinating being. He is very tough, very non-emotional, so wise though, and so is to the point, <laughs> like he means business when he talks to you. And I'm sure that you would be able to get your own insights, right? Because 
and that's that's the beauty of you know having connection and and, and working on, on on your own abilities like you don't have to receive um you know you don't have to take my word for it you can go uh you know check it out um take it upon yourself to connect to the systems architect and he'll tell you all about it himself Alrighty, my darling send you sending you a big virtual hug i'll see you in the next one bye